Um, I'm Lucina, and I'm here with my colleague Akash. <laughs> we work at Volt Cooperative. It's a software cooperative that helps CNCF with strategic initiatives to help cloud native, um, to help the cloud native computing foundation make cloud native ubiquitous, including with their telco initiatives like the CNF certification program. Has anyone here heard of the CNF certification program by CNCF? Oh, nice. About half of you. Great. Well, we're excited to share the latest and greatest of the program. Um, there was a press release out today ahead of Telco Day, so be sure to check that out. And um, I'll give a history of how we got here, what we're working on now, and what's next. Then Akash will join us for a deep dive on the CNF certification process, how that works, and the underlying framework, the tooling underneath of the tests. And we do have time for questions at the end, so please hold your time for Q&A. If you'd like to follow along, these slides are all on Sketch, so you can check that out. So firstly, CNCF is a community-driven um, place for projects and initiatives, so we wanted to thank the community, first of all, for helping us with um, the contributions, the thought leadership, and your support. So thanks everyone who's helped us along the way, and thanks in advance if you're interested in helping us and uh, contributing later. The CNF certification program provides confidence to CSPs to make sure that their vendors are um, using cloud native best practices in their networking applications. So we know that CSPs are migrating to cloud native, and CNCF created a microsurvey earlier this year to better understand why. And as Philip mentioned earlier, they're looking for eliminating vendor lock-in and dependencies, uh, decoupling hardware and software, interoperability, flexibility, agility. The CNF definition, uh, CNF contains one or more microservices that follows cloud native best practices like declarative API, immutable infrastructure, and a repeatable deployment process. The initial definition of CNF was defined in 2018 by Dan Kahn, Ed Warnicke, and Frederick Kotz at ONS um, in Los Angeles. And there, a challenge was given to us. How do we apply cloud-native network functions to telco applications? And how would we measure the benefits of going from VNFs to CNFs? And with that, we created a, pro a prototype, the CNF testbed, to validate CNF proof of concepts with FDIO, Intel, and Cisco. At KubeCon EU, the telco user group kicked off to facilitate discussions between service providers and vendors and also connect like-minded folks who are ready to move from VNFs to CNFs, from monoliths to microservices. We looked into each part of the CNF definition to highlight the attributes of what cloud native means. In 2020, white papers were published, the cloud native uh, network principles, and the cloud native thinking for telecommunications. And the CNF test suite started uh, all with help with service providers like Bell, um, sorry, <laughs> Bell and Vodafone, and vendors like Nokia, uh, Samsung, Intel, Volk, and others. To complement the test suite, the CNF working group was created to document best practices, uh, cloud native best practices for telco use cases. And at the end of 2021, the CNF test suite had over 60 tests running from contributions from CNF projects like Litmus Chaos to test self-healing, Open Metrics to test observability, Kyverno, and Cubescape for security. And earlier this year, the CNF certification version 1.0 beta was announced at Valencia. So as of today, uh, we have five certified products from vendors F5, Juniper, Matrix, and Pantheon Tech, and more on the way, more in process. 
The CNF certification program is different because it's open. It uses open source, open standards, open implementations. And it's a community-driven, bottom-up approach so that it uses the cloud-native ecosystem experts to uh, create the standards rather than a top-down standards body approach. And there are no kingmakers. The CNCF uh, prefers to allow a healthy competition in its ecosystem. So it doesn't like to say this is the best solution for all. It allows competition and it allows um, choice. So this means that telcos can choose to adopt the cloud native best practices in addition to standards that also meet their business needs. And it means that tests in the implementation come from multiple sources. So we have security tests from multiple sources. While there are several certifications for telcos that test interoperabilities of CNFs on a vendor-specific Kubernetes platform, the CNF certification tests on any certified Kubernetes environment and checks cloud-native principles like interoperability, resilience, workload self-healing, just to name a few. To earn a certified CNF badge, uh, you can get started on the landing page, cncf.io slash CNF. Participants will fill out a participation form and meet eligibility requirements. After they run their CNF through the test suite, they'll submit their pull request with their test results to us, and then um, they'll earn the certified CNF mark and be listed on the landing page as well as the landscape for CNCF. Some frequently asked questions. The CNF certification is per product, and there's no limit to the number of products a company can certify as long as each product has its own participation form. And there's no charge for CNCF members or nonprofit organizations. So what's next? We'll continue to collaborate with providers and vendors and cloud native ecosystem to document those best practices, including the operator framework, a CNCF incubating project, the uh, TAG app delivery, and LF projects like NEFIO for automation. And also we hope to have a new release ahead of KubeCon EU. Speaking of, we wanted to mention some upcoming events. So tomorrow there is a chaos day and the team will be talking about our litmus chaos test in the CNF test suite and the CNF certification. And next month, we will be at One Summit Seattle for lightning talk, and we'll also be doing a hands-on tutorial on how to run the test suite and run your CNF through the certification program. So we can walk you through that process. And KubeCon EU will be held in Amsterdam in April. The uh, CFPs are open until November 18th for that, and stay tuned for the CFPs for the next Telco Day, and start thinking about what you might want to see in this program or what you might want to present yourself. All right, please welcome Akash to the stage to talk a bit about the CNF Test Suite. Hi, I'm Akash and I have a fast heartbeat right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the CNF test suite, it's Breeze. So the CNF test suite is designed to help developers and ops teams by codifying best practices that are part of this CNF certification program. It helps you stay aligned with the cloud native ecosystem, various concepts and projects. It also has a fast execution time, so if you, you were to use this in your CI pipeline, that is supported and you can have faster feedback loops for your development and for your pre-production checks. Now the test suite that we have leverages upstream tools wherever possible. We use Prometheus, OpenMetrics, Jaeger, and FluentD to test for observability. We use Litmus Chaos to test for resilience. And we use Kiverno by Nirmata and Kubescape by Armo to test for security best practices. We also use Helm to test for configurability and installability of CNFs. Now these are just some of the tools that we integrated, there are a lot more. Now, now the test suite requires a multi-node Kubernetes cluster along with Helm, kubectl, and curl. 
the test suite is compatible with any Kubernetes, uh, any certified Kubernetes platform, including distributions from AWS, Azure, Google, Red Hat, and kind. You could use any of the other certificate, any of the other distributions also. Let us know if you're using any other distribution or environment, and we'll try to support it for you. Now you can run the test suite in five easy steps. Download the test suite, run the setup command, create a configuration file for your CNF, and install the CNF using the CNF setup command, and then run the cert command in order, be, in order to be able to run all the tests. Now when you run the setup command, you should see something like this. The setup command checks for prerequisites, and it also installs certain tools that are required by the test suite to run certain tests. And the test suite requires a YAML configuration file to test any CNF. At a bare minimum, this configuration file needs to include the release name, anything that you choose for your CNF, the Helm chart to install, and the Helm repository to pick the Helm chart from. To install the CNF, run the CNF setup command with the CNF option with the path to the YAML configuration file that we just created. And the file that we just created is for CodeENS, and we are going to test that with the test suite. OK. So let's run the cert command in order to run all the tests. Now you see some output there that's in red, yellow, and green. Any lines in green, it means that your tests have passed. You have lines in red, that means you have failures for your tests. And if you see lines in yellow, those are tests that are skipped. That means that there are certain tests that are being skipped for because they, they don't meet the criteria on your platform. Now, all the tests that was, that was just run as a part of the test suite or the, or the cert command that you just saw, those are the seven categories of tests that are best practices that Lucina just showed off in the previous slides. Now, after, after the cert command is finished running, it outputs a summary that looks something like this. It tells you the number of tests that have passed. It also displays a file name where the results have been saved. Now, this is what the results file looks like if you open that YAML file that, that was saved after the cert command. It contains the same information that was output to the console, but it's in machine-readable format. So you could include this as a part of your CI pipelines if you were to use it for daily development. You could put this in your GitHub Actions, Jenkins, or uh, any other CI system that you work with. And we already, already have end users like Dish Wireless, Matrix, and Anuket that already integrated the test suite as a part of their development process. Now, the results file is essential in order to get certified. In order to get certified, you would create a pull request to the CNCF slash CNF certification repository with some information. That includes the product name, the product version, the vendor of the product, and the results file itself. The repository has a readme with detailed information. The link is on the slides, which should be available to you after the talk or if you have downloaded the slides via the QR code. I would like to bring Lucina back about uh, to tell us about how we can work together. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sakash. Yeah, there are a lot of ways that you can collaborate with us. Uh, we have meetings on Mondays for the CNF Working Group to document best practices. We meet on Tuesdays for the CNF Certification and CNF Test Suite office hours. You can also find us on the CNCF public Slack. As well, you can send us an email or forward our email to any of your colleagues who might be interested. If you'd like to schedule a demo or a working session of the CNF test suite, this is our Calendly. We're available here all week at KubeCon, and we can also meet with you on Zoom anytime remotely. And if you're ready to get started and join your CNF in a growing list of certified CNF products on the landing page, feel free to get started at cncf.io slash CNF. So we do have some time for q and I'd like to introduce and bring up um, the contributors and some maintainers of the CNF test suite who can also help answer your questions. Thanks. 
you can also put the name to the face and know uh, who to reach out to. Hi, Will. It's so about Will Harris. <laughs> You're welcome to just hang out on the front too if you want. Avoid the steps. Taylor Carpenter. Hi, Denver. Watson and Drew. Do we have any questions? All right, got a first question. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, Taylor. You you actually pr try to explain for me how the scoring works, but I do not really get it. Can you explain it a bit more, like? Like what cases are mandatory, what cases are not, and how the final score is calculated? Sure. All right. The question was, can you explain how scoring works and what is mandatory? Oh, and it was specifically to Taylor. All right. <laughs> um, so there is uh, essential test, um, normal, and bonus tests, that's kind of how we have it split right now. And there's the set that are included in the certification, and then there's kind of extended beyond that. Uh, the essentials tests are, and, and what we're looking at is more of, what do we have now and what are we going for in the future? So there may end up being levels of certification. So certified, maybe we'll have like silver, gold, platinum in the future as we're going forward. Um, the essential are those baseline tests. Here's what we think every um, application and a workload should have. And to get certified, you have to have, at this point, 10 of 15 of those essential tests. Um, looking towards those others are, are saying we're adopting more of those best practices. And as uh, far as scoring goes, that's what it is right now for that uh, getting the certified level. It's the number of tests out of the total. Does that answer your question? Thanks. Any other questions? Um, so there's a lot of different pieces that make up a stack and can alter the behavior of a given CNF. And so how do you see this interacting at like validating a matrix of different components from the hardware to the Kubernetes layer to the CNF itself? Um, or is this really trying to be focused strictly on the software that's powering the network? Oh, so currently the CNF certification looks at workloads that are running on Kubernetes. And would anyone like to expand on that? Yeah, what Lucina said is true. There's also, as far as the platform, there's uh, Anakit, so we can talk to Gergay about that. So the, I, I think um, part of the idea is to look at also the applications and you have in a workload you may say there's a many different applications and some are at a higher level and they look the same as any other Kubernetes applications. In that case you just say well it's simple you should be adopting any of the best practices that are applicable to any Kubernetes application. And where it starts looking different, I think, is maybe in applications that are going to be related to like what was the F5 talk earlier. So what are you going to do on these different networking pieces? But even there, you can talk about best practices on different aspects of the application before you get to a point where you say, well, we're not quite sure because we don't have a standard yet that the community has adopted. But that doesn't mean all the other parts. And then if you're looking at um, the something like 5G applications, you may say, well, all of these components in the core network can follow these specific set and focus on getting those going forward. I think with like um, Facebook's Magma, 
you're seeing some of that where you see some of the interfaces are not going with the standards that were in the past because you can maybe use uh, something newer that's a good fit within a Kubernetes environment, but then they'll have other pieces around the edges that may use a 3GPP standard. So, um, obviously, I believe in this because F5 has certified some of our CNFs, but um, there are other CNF certifications, um, and like as much as I love my friends at Red Hat, like they have their own, um, and a bunch of their stuff is super specific to them, like you have to use their base image, you have to be in their marketplace, this kind of stuff. Is there some thought of maybe um, using like the CNCF certification as a base? like having some of these others start leveraging it as like a first step in certification? Has there been any talk there? My initial is yes, absolutely. Uh, it is a base layer. We know that it's not gonna solve all problems for all telcos. We do hope that it solves, eliminate the ambiguity of what we're saying when we say CNF and what properties we're looking for when we say CNF or cloud native network function. So we do hope that we can gain more end users from uh, those telcos, um, other conformance that um, might find value in some of the tests that we're checking that they're not yet, that aren't specific to one vendor's um, platform, but can be applied broadly. Uh, we've reached out to several of the projects and orgs too, including um, Red Hat. So there's some of the tests look like they're very similar or complementary. I, I don't know if, uh, I haven't tried to run the Red Hat uh, test suite, which is on GitHub. Um, in other environments, but I, I, I'm not sure if it would work outside of OpenShift. But we've tried to make sure that the CNF um, test suite works in any environment where we're seeing uh, end users, they're running theirs. So running an OpenShift would be a good baseline. So we're saying, yes, if you pass the CNF certification, then you should be good on, you know, some portion of whatever you're going to have on a, a maybe a distribution specific um, testing, and so it would add on there. So I, I, I think it's it is a good place for that. Um, Anikit uh, is has been focused on the platform side uh, mainly for the last like 18 months or so, but they have some workload application specific that would get into and what I would think of as like a Kubernetes distribution and having opinionated ways of doing stuff, but you're still gonna start with base Kubernetes and then build out what are the components on there. Well, you're gonna have Kubernetes native pieces that you may want to adopt and you're gonna have cloud native pieces that maybe go beyond that. So yes, it's a good place and we're definitely open to those conversations and we're advocating within CNCF to do that, like that, that's part of what they want us to, to do that, but to work with the specific ones like what is LFN coming out with, what is Red Hat, what is Google coming out with, definitely open to that and anyone that has would like to have a conversation, please reach out to us. How much of these um, is specific to telco and CNFs, and how much of these can be used to other types of cloud native workloads? Who wants to take it? Yes, yeah, so at the moment, the way we've got the platform is it's there's a lot of tests that are, you know, kind of focused on CNFs, but We've got a few there where we're running against Core DNS and other applications. So, I mean, arguably, we can test any application, containerized application that's doing, operating on network layers. So, layer three up, if it's operating on a network stack layer, then we can do tests against it and check 
whether it's following cloud native principles. Yeah, and I guess that's another thing Taylor just mentioned, which is in line with the chaos talk we're doing, is we're testing resiliency and availability of the application, and that's something that is really applicable to any cloud native application, whether it's Talco or Enterprise. More questions? All right. No question. Just can you go back to the first slide that you're up here? Sure. Okay, we got time probably for one more question. Anyone else? Okay. All right, well, big applaud, warm applaud to <laughs> all of you on stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so um, we're going to have a coffee break now um, out in the foyer.